on this episode of the CPG and CBD University podcast, innovation in gummy manufacturing, staying on top of trending ingredients, flavors, products, and manufacturing innovative new products to answer consumer and retailer demand. This is the CPG and CBD University podcast, and it starts right now. I'm Joe Augustinelli, host of the CPG and CBD University podcast. We're talking innovation on this episode of our podcast. Four members of our team at Global Widget join me for this episode as a contracting, as a contract, excuse me, manufacturing powerhouse with the capacity of about 5 million gummies each week. It's paramount to stay on top of emerging trends and help bridge the gap between industry demand and total market capacity. And I bring on the members who are part of our innovation team, Vicki Hayward and Sean Murray from our marketing team and from our formulation team, Sarah Brown and Jessica Quinn. Everybody, welcome to the podcast. Vicki, welcome to your first podcast. Everybody else, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. So as I mentioned, you four of a part our brand new innovation team. So uh, what's the purpose of this new initiative? Who wants to start things off? <laughs> If you want, I can jump in. Um, basically, I mean, the definition of innovation is market and development of products that are either new or um, making something better. But so why not mix formulation and marketing in order to develop those products? So that was kind of the goal is to come up with what's new and what's innovative and uh, what's missing in the market. Mixing formulation, so from the formulation side, mixing formulation and marketing, usually we don't see that until the end of the process, but how is it uh, interacting now as part of really almost the pre-planning process of new products? Uh, it was great as they have the ability to look at like trending stuff that's going on. If there's ingredients that happen to be um, trending or really popular at a time, they have the information to look it up and find out what what we should be focusing on. So it's really helpful to have them as part of the team to be able to help give us like the most current up-to-date information on what we might want to start formulating with. And Sean and Sarah, I think you've been here the longest out of the four on this podcast. I found out before we started recording, I thought it was Sean, it actually not Sean, it's Sarah by a few weeks, so I'll let them both answer here. The innovation that you've seen since you've been here, I mean, how have things changed, Sean, I'll let you that first. I mean, when I first started, we were operating out of a tiny office building and distribution and manufacturing were completely separate um, places down the road. Um, within the year I started working, we purchased the building we're at now, 110,000 square feet, state-of-the-art facility, um, the capacity change, it's a FDA registered facility now. And we kind of shifted because we were a CBD company at first and building off the innovation, we found new trends. Um, we started building towards these other ingredients that are becoming more popular. And Sarah, what have you seen from the really the product development yeah. side I mean, on the innovation? I, when I first started doing products, it was mostly focused on like e-liquids and things like that. It was mostly vapes, right? So like I first started on the production side, he was more on the other building. We were different buildings, but production side, we were in a strip mall and making just tons and tons of, of gummies and also vapes in the, in the oils and things like that. So like from that, we barely make any of those products anymore other than gummies, obviously, but it's not really CBD. It's mostly now the CPG side of things. So we've moved on to a completely different marketplace altogether and it's just been completely amazing to watch. <clears throat> And Sarah and Jessica, you've both been on a number of our Gummy Central theme podcasts. How important is it in the industry to stay on top of the latest trends and stay ahead when it comes to the innovation and new products? Yeah, it's very important. So um, this way we can see what's trending and try to put it into a gummy. So Before anybody else can think of doing yeah. it before us. <laughs> <laughs> Give them what they want before they know that yeah. they want it. And you, I mean, from the R&D side, you guys obviously also meet on your own, correct? To, on top of meeting with the innovation side to go through yeah. latest trends? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we're always researching on our own as well, just to trigger, I'm trying to figure out new ideas for things. <laughs> and Vicki and Sean, as I mentioned, marketing and formulation are two departments one would usually see in constant collaboration until down the road. What have you guys learned from the formulation side and the R&D side in, in talking innovation? 
Um, I've learned a ton of words that I can't pronounce. Think <laughs> <laughs> um, like how I feel yeah. having them on the podcast all the time. I didn't even know what ashwagandha was, and then now I can say without even looking down at my script as to what is that. Yep. So I think it goes hand in hand though, because they are on the front line of seeing these ingredients and um, what people, like they said, might not know yet that they're looking for. But health and wellness is a huge industry, so there's multiple aspects. Uh, multiple ingredients we can look towards to formulate into a gummy we can look at it from the marketing standpoint of how are we going to sell this to somebody what do they want to better off their wellness and so that's what we've been building off yeah and it sounds like um i mean the amount of things i've learned from just spending time with them and learning what ingredients can go together what can't go together what can you put in a gummy what can't mm -hmm. um that's actually rather fascinating and it's interesting because it sounds like there seems to be new ingredients all the time um, and then you have branded ingredients versus generic ingredients and the claims you can make so it's almost like you pull a thread and it just keeps going um, so I think that's been a, an awesome learning curve to share um, because we may have market data to back something up but if we can't use those ingredients to make a gummy they're going to tell us so you're not even bothering researching it ahead of time because now we know okay we can't do this but can we do this and that's where it gets exciting as we start interacting with if we can't do it this way they have ideas on how we can make it happen so what are some ingredients we can't put in gummies that may be trending ingredients in other products <laughs> have we come across i mean it sounds like we've come across that I, I mean, I think, I, I don't know about Mind. specifically, but mostly things that are just really bad tasting make things yeah. difficult. Also that, yeah. In the gummies, um, or structure, like, or, like, chemically, they just don't allow the gummy to necessarily form right. So sometimes they interact with, like, the gel forming of our pectins and things mm -hmm. like that. We have a little bit of difficulty with things like magnesium, magnesium. for that reason. Mm -hmm. It just likes to interact and keep the gummy from forming, so it takes a little bit more work to get those types of things to work in a gummy. Mostly it's people wanting a lot yeah. of one or two things and it just doesn't like logically make any sense to put that much in there. <laughs> so it's mostly that. When I first brought that question up, Jessica made a face as if she's had to taste some of these innovative products that uh, yeah. just didn't make the, the final cut. Most fun, yeah. <laughs> so, with, so without getting into too many specifics, what are some of the latest innovations in the gummy space that perhaps maybe kind of sort of maybe making their way into products soon? Fiber. We have so People many fiber. Yeah. <laughs> fiber gummies are getting really popular. <laughs> yeah. We've been working on those um, things that deal with like stomach gut health, things like that we've been working on other types of, you know, body health things mm -hmm. that we could use the mental health, mental too. health as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, things for hair growth, things for, you know, uh, joint relief, PMS relief, like PMS, all sorts yeah. of focused yeah. ingredients. Yeah. Yeah. Seems to be a lot of heavy focus on athletics mm -hmm. um, and workout supplements, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, so wrapping things up, favorite, I mean, you guys get probably, I mean, although I think in the office, maybe even on the marketing side, you've probably tasted some of the gummies before they hit the market. Favorite gummy, you don't have to mention the brand if it's not one of our own, um, but we you know, obviously we talk about it on the C CPG side. Favorite gummy that you've had or enjoyed the most that we've developed? Mm, I like a real strong uh, vitamin C gummy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like it. Sarah makes a really good beet gummy, and I hate Ooh. beets. But it's really good in a gummy. <laughs> we talked about this on the last episode yeah. you were on. Um, when I actually, yeah, I was, I actually had the ability to taste test one of those and I do like beets, but I didn't think beets would be good in a gummy, but they were actually very good. And I think that was on, that was on the sugar-free episode we had talked about, if I recall. Yeah, sugar-free yeah. so, too. Best way to eat a beet. See, I do remember <laughs> past episodes and what we talk about. So I, I don't just sit back here and, and host the thing. Uh, Sean Vick, favorite, favorite gummies? Um, anything berry, so either like the botanical blend from hemp bombs or I think the immune well or berry too, so mm -hmm. those are tasty. Mm. I kind of go more towards like the glow well I liked, mm -hmm. um, and I like the energy well, honestly, because I 
like apple cider vinegar mm. effects of it, yeah. but I don't like taking apple cider vinegar. I get heartburn. So taking energy well is doesn't give me any heartburn. And both of those gummies that you talked about, uh, we talked back about on episode 104 when we launched Forever Well Nutrition. See, it all comes together in the end. <laughs> um, I had one more question I was going to uh, ask before we uh, conclude things. And on the innovation side, is there a time? I mean, how long do these ingredients stay innovative or, or trending? I mean, I'm just thinking back to, like I said, I mean, ashwagandha I learned and we still see it. Are there ingredients that are hot for a short period of time and then all of a sudden, hey, we got to move on to something else? I mean, like some of the cannabinoids were like that. Like CBD was trending for only a few years and it kind of died off a little bit. Um, I think so, there's certain things that are going to stay around forever, maybe. You know, like elderberry is pretty strong. I don't see it fading anytime soon. Uh, apple cider vinegar is one of those things that's been around mm -hmm. for a long while. Um, but again, you never know. Like the market could always yeah. change. could always change in a few years. It's not really things that last very short periods of time, maybe. It's usually a good maybe three, four, five years chunk of time. Something might be trending. Also, like ashwagandha and L-theanine that you've seen a lot of products, they're helpful in a lot of different areas mm -hmm. too so you can put them in a, a lot of different gummies mm -hmm. so they'll stay around for a while and it's just like how beneficial is the actual ingredient do you guys do flavors along with ingredients or not yet it's more <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it also depends i'm sure on the ingredients and yeah. what it can yeah. be yeah. flavored with yes well very good guys thanks for all the uh info and obviously as new products and innovation uh, come up we'll have you guys back on the podcast to see what you guys are cooking back there ah see hey little witty <laughs> anyhow jessica quinn sarah brown from our formulation team sean murray vicky hayward from our marketing team all members of the global widget innovation team and my guest today thank you all for uh, joining me that was fun yeah thank you thanks Jim. And as I mentioned, we'll keep you updated on everything innovation throughout our social media channels and this podcast. So hit that subscribe button wherever you get your podcasts and get new, get notifications of new episodes each week. You can also watch video episodes on the Global Widget YouTube channel. I'm Joe Augustinelli, host of the CPG and CBD University podcast. Thank you for tuning in. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. CBD products are not intended to treat, cure, or prevent any disease or condition. Always consult your personal physician about CBD and using CBD products. CBD should never be used by anyone under the age of 18. This podcast is not intended to provide legal advice regarding the legal status of CBD and CBD products.